Here we go again. Oh, no, not again. You've seen it before, haven't you? Dom, how long have we been doing this? Once more unto the bridge. Dear friends. Again and again and again until we're both dead. Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, movie reviews and connections in mind. Shazam is the latest in the worlds of DC film a filmography and stars Zachary Levi as the titular hero Shazam as well as Mark Strong as the villain of the picture. And this film focuses on the origin story of the hero Shazam in the form of 14-year-old Billy Batson, a child, who, a, a child who's now been placed in a foster home because his, he was separated from his mother at a young age and he finds himself uh, whisked away to a secret lair by a uh, home of a wizard who has uh, a desperate charge in his uh, in his possession that has been a evil force that has been unleashed onto the world, and he must give the powers of this uh, wizard order to Billy Batson to become the champion and the only one capable of stopping this evil uh, force from uh, destroying the world, essentially. And uh, Billy Batson becomes Shazam for, uh, when he calls his name. He uh, become, turns into an adult form and has incredible powers, and with that comes all the problems of being an adult with superpowers while, while being a 14-year-old kid dealing with kid problems. Now, this video review will contain spoilers of Shazam as well as certain other films. There will be a full list in the description below. And I'm just going to say this now, if you have not seen Shazam yet or any of the films listed below, you're going to want to stop the video right here and come back later. I encourage you to come back later. But with all that being said, without further ado, let's get into some review and analysis of Shazam. Now, this picture is continuing the trend that I feel that uh, DC has been on ever since uh, uh, Justice League, in, in, in essence, when Justice League was pretty much the first film in the DC Extended Universe slash Worlds of DC, where we see a bit of a course correction uh, in the movies as they go on, because uh, we had seen um, Dark and Gritty with both Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Um, we had a little bit lighter, but still sort of dark and gritty with Wonder Woman. And then Justice League seemed to be a bit of a blend of the two, where it was still sort of dark and gritty, but it was transitioning into a more lighthearted and colorful and fun universe where all these characters could be. And then when Aquaman came around, we saw that that is essentially what is happening with these films. That is, because all these characters are being allowed to uh, still be in this world, but in essence have their own stories and just have a little fun with it. It. They saw it in Aquaman. We see it once again with Shazam. This is a very fun film. Um, I will say there really isn't a lot of new kind of tropes with this film, as we'll see later, but um, it's really the kind of same ingredients. It's really a fairly standard origin story, as we see. It's the same story of someone who believes they're not worthy, uh, is given a large amount of power, and they are either tempted to uh, misuse it, or they are uh, shirking their hero responsibilities, and then when a real threat comes around, they may hide it first, but then when the people they care about are threatened, they and have to have no choice but to step up to the plate and uh, fix what was wrong about themselves in the process, and then they come out after defeating the villain stronger and as a better person than they were before. Uh, like I said, this is very similar uh, similar tropes in superhero films and really hero stories that we've seen in so many things. What makes this uh, film? Uh, more fresh though is because it takes all these old ingredients and really just kind of mixes them around and just gives it makes us care about the characters. I really cared about Billy Batson dealing with the implications of becoming this awesome superhero uh, while being uh, a still a kid in a high school environment uh, while also trying to search for his his real mother and try and feeling almost resentful towards the 
fa foster family has been put in that where he can uh, that they are trying very hard to integrate him into the family but he doesn't really want any of that but they're slowly coming around to him I love that story about this and uh, I love the dynamic that uh, the other kids in the group have um, I thought that uh, they did focus a lot on the relationship between Billy and um, oh, was it Freddy that was the uh, the table kid um, they, they kind of focus a lot on him, but I love that uh, by the end of the film, the rest of the character, the kids get their due. Um, I just love that and their dynamic, especially my only regret with that is uh, a couple of the kids, we really don't see a whole lot about their character traits. And um, but then when we get to the point where spoiler alert, they uh uh, Billy is able to transfer the powers of Shazam to all of these uh, other kids as well and share the power. Um, we get to see uh, the fulfillment of the dream for uh, Freddy, I think. And um, then really we get to see the... Um, the little girl, um, she, uh, we get to see her come into her own there, but we don't get to see... Um, uh, Pedro, I believe, is the other one, and Eugene. We really only got to see, like, one side of them as they were little kids. So then when they were um, turned into the adult versions of themselves as with the powers of Shazam, um, I just didn't feel like that really... Um, gave the uh, the impetus to show us how they're now different and the as the wizard said uh when he transformed billy he is now at his fullest potential we didn't get really get to see um what the other characters full potential even could be so when we get to see them at their fullest potential it's not as satisfying i think it's still fun don't get me wrong but i feel like that was something that uh, maybe somewhat suffer just because the fact that there's so many supporting characters and you can only focus on so many of them at any one time. Um, that's really my only main regret about this film. Uh, otherwise, I, I thought that they actually gave the villain, uh, Mark Strong's character, um, it was a fairly simple motivation where uh, his his uh, father and his brother thought that he wasn't good enough for anything. And then once he get, gets this power, he uh, gives them what's what and then desires more and more power. I mean, it's a simple motivation, but it works. We don't really need to dwell so much on it because we understand that. And I thought that worked really well. And I just, I just can't praise this uh, film enough. Um, I mean, maybe the visuals were a little bit um, not very imaginative, per se. Like, um, I don't know, just the fight sequences themselves, they were kind of cut a little bit uh, too much, uh, especially between um, Billy Shazam and Mark Strong's character. Um, I thought that, especially in the final battle, maybe um, they cut, uh, they cut the, sh the shots a little too close, maybe. Um, but other than that, I would say this is definitely a very fun film, and if you haven't already, you should definitely go see this film. It is worth it. Um, so some analysis on where you may have seen it before. Um, the, uh, the whole motivation of Mark Strong's character, as I said, he is, um, was, a, in the beginning of this film, he was originally gi uh, given the chance to become the champion of Shazam, um, these, this wizarding order, but he failed the test, and then his life was set on a path of basically pure rage and envy and vengeance at this point, and then when he comes across the uh, Billy as Shazam with this power, he becomes extremely jealous of him and saying that, that his power should have been, uh, Billy's powers should have been given to Mark Strong's character, very reminiscent to uh, the storyline of the first Kung Fu Panda um, with uh, Poe and Tai Lung, uh, where Tai Lung was originally supposed to be the uh, dragon warrior, but then Poe, uh, but he, he had darkness in his heart, and so he was cast away, and then Poe came in to become the dragon warrior, and Tai Lung's motivation is now, uh, I deserve this power, and this panda does not. So there's an interesting comparison to be made there. Also, this, um, as I said uh, before, uh, near the climax of this film, uh, Billy, uh, the kids finally figured out that Billy has been given this extremely awesome uh, gift in the powers of Shazam, and uh, 
uh, Billy figures out that he can share the power of Shazam with all of his uh, these foster kids that he's now become a family with, and they end up fighting together with the same power set. Um, this kind of reminded me of the first How to Train Your Dragon, actually, when Hiccup um, gets, uh, he meets Toothless and he starts training with him, learning about uh, Toothless and, and training him and begin, uh, learning how to ride him. And um, he has a friend uh, also who knows all about dragons. And so he constantly goes to him, uh, surreptitiously trying to figure out um, how to... Uh, learn about all these dragons and how they work and uh, more about their habits and behaviors um, like um, Billy coming to uh, Freddy uh, to um, learn all about the superhero and as he says you know all about this Cape Crusader stuff and much like Shazam by the end of How to Train Your Dragon uh, the first one um, all of it, uh, all of Hiccup's uh, friends in the Dragon Training uh, Academy or whatever, they uh, they learn to get their own dragons, and then they go off to fight uh, with their own dragons. It was essentially uh, complementary and the same uh, powers as Hiccup had this whole time, uh, or the same relationship Hiccup had this whole time. Uh, so. A little bit different, but still an interesting comparison to be made nonetheless. And finally, I would say that um, Billy's search for his biological uh, uh, parent, or only to find that that parent is not the person that they, uh, or that the original person is was hoping them to be, and he uh, the the hero finds out that um, his adoptive family um, is his real family in the essence. Um, much like how Billy Batson uh, found his biological mother, but it turns out his mother um, abandoned him because she felt that she couldn't take care of him and she was in a bad way. And he finds out that his uh, Billy's lifelong search has been essentially for nothing and he ends up going to embrace his uh, adoptive family. So uh, similar in a way to uh, Peter Quill's search uh, for his father in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when he finally meets his biological father, but he turns out to be a uh, maniac. Uh, shall we say, and uh, the, of course, all through the film, there's a pull between uh, Quill trying to make nice with his biological father at the sacrifice of his uh, adoptive family, and then when he uh, Quill finds out about his father's true motivations, he fi uh, he finally rejects him and um, become and becomes more attached to his adoptive family, namely the Guardians of the Galaxy. So. There's my main points of comparison with Shazam and what has come before, but what did you think of the movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What about something I missed? I probably missed something. I don't get them all. So let me know in the comments down below either way. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Um, be sure to look for my next movie review, which will be for the new Hellboy, which will be coming out uh, April 12th, I believe. Uh, also, I do reaction series to each and every episode of Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery, as well as Season 2 of The Orville. So, look for my reactions to the latest episodes of those on my channel as well. And if you like what you saw, please, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. Um, you guys are the best, as I said. Thank you so much for watching. But just remember, there is nothing new under the sun. And yes, you have seen it before.